Well, welcome to The Law Show, where we're going to cover the recent musings and ongoings of the United States Supreme Court. I'm Joel Oster. And I'm Ari Gross. And this last week has been a banner week at the Supreme Court. We're going to talk about three cases. The first case deals with Witt v. Guilford. But before we get there, Ari, let me ask you this. If I say the term or mention the name Notorious RGB, who am I talking about? Uh, is that a rapper? <laughs> no, it's not a rapper, not NM's alter ego. This is notorious <laughs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She loves to be called by that nickname. She likes to bring it down, bring smack at the U.S. Supreme Court. And in this case, she's going to bring it against Justice Gorsuch. We promise to get there shortly. The first case we're going to talk about is Witt v. Guilford. And in that case, it dealt with political gerrymandering. Now, Ari, I don't want to put you on the spot here. But I'm going to do it. What is gerrymandering? Uh, I have no idea. It sounds like a man's name and, you know, a little orange fruit. I'm guessing that it doesn't involve either one of those. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. In, in fairness to you, I also asked my teenage boys as they walked out of the house today, what was gerrymandering? They had not I, no idea. They looked at me like their dad was crazy. Not a very unfamiliar look in my household, but nonetheless, that was the issue before the U.S. Supreme Court in the Witt case. In there, the Wisconsin uh, Republican Party had gained control of the governorship and both houses in the legislature. And so since they had this newfound power, they redrew the maps to ensure that they stayed in power. I have trouble understanding how that's even legal. <laughs> well, and how, how does the Supreme Court, how, how does this involve the Supreme Court? Well, that's actually a fair question. In fact, Justice Gorsuch asked that question. Why is the Supreme Court even being involved in reviewing the state political boundaries? That's when Notorious RGB came in with her smackdown. She said, you want a statute? You want a statute? How about the U.S. Constitution? Is that statute enough for you? So in legal terms, that's trash talk. And that was Notorious RGB. Now, the second case, I think, might hit a little bit closer to home for you, Ari. Uh, this is the, the case involving um, house parties. And in this, it was District of Columbia v. Westby. And in this case, a big old house party was thrown there in, the, in D.C., but it was a vacant house. There was no furniture in this house. But yet this lady named Peaches invited all of her friends over to this, this vacant house for a party. The police came and they arrested these people for trespassing into a vacant house. Now, Erie, is, have you been to many house parties? Let me just throw out a disclaimer here. Maybe I can relate to this story a little bit, but not in recent years. It's okay. been at least a decade since I've been to like a wild house party. All that right, being right, said, right. now have you ever been to a house party where you checked out the lease agreement between the person who invited you and make sure they actually had right to be in that house? You know, I have to say that I have not, but I would probably be a little suspicious if there was no furniture in the house. That's a little strange. That's right. There was no furniture, but there was a lot of mattresses, and which I have no idea what kind of party that would be. There was some drug paraphernalia around the house, and the lady that invited them was named Peaches. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, the police are saying, look, come on, guys. There is enough evidence here to suggest to everyone that this is a vacant house. And so, therefore, everyone should have been put on notice. Now, Ari, the case is going to be decided based upon the issue of reasonableness. Was it reasonable for the cops to assume that the people who attended this house party knew it was vacant? Well, what do you think? As a non-lawyer, do you think the cops are acting reasonable? Well, let me think for a second. We've got tens of, I don't know how many people, but I know that there were 16 People alone involved in this lawsuit, right? Right, right. So you've got like gads of people, strippers with money in their garter belts, no furniture, drug paraphernalia, and they're claiming that their hostess is named after fruit. <laughs> Right. I think it would be unreasonable for them to not do something. <laughs> I, 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 you would be on the majority side, in, or the uh, on the side of this case that would say the cops were acting reasonable. Again, this looks to be like a, a close vote. We'll have to wait and see if justices like uh, uh, Sotomayor and Kagan are asking questions, saying that look, you don't check the lease agreement when you go to a house party. You just assume that peaches had the right to be there, but you make some excellent points. Like, come on. Everyone knew what was going on there. This was a vacant house party. 
Well, up last year, this is the Supreme Court took up the Trump travel ban. I'm sure you've heard of the Trump travel ban. The issue in that case was was what did President Trump and his administration target Muslims to keep them out of the country? Now, Eri, what do you think? Do you think that President Trump was targeting Muslims? Well, based off what I heard about some of his campaign speeches, I would say that was true. Oh, come I think on, there's a lot so of people you, who would agree. Just because he said it doesn't mean he actually believes it. Don't you know that about our president? You can't believe it everything on, he tweets. It was on social media. Therefore, it is a fact. All right, all right, all right. But well, Trump seriously, pulled old, I... Trump pulled the old uh, rug out, out underneath the Supreme Court here because they changed the travel ban this past week. They changed it to include additional countries, uh, North Korea being one and Venezuela being another. So not Muslim dominated countries. So now Trump is saying, look, I'm not targeting Muslims. I don't like a lot of people. And so they, what they did was they asked the court to get rid of the case on mootness, meaning we changed the law. So the law that was before the court is no longer the law. And so the court should dismiss it. And the court did that, undid the lower court's opinions. And so it's going back to square one. So what do you think about the Trump travel ban decision? You know what we call that in layperson terms? What's that? Equal opportunity hating. <laughs> right, Equal right. opportunity hating. Hey, it as long as you like hate everyone, you're okay. You're okay. <laughs> well, that was the ongoings of the Supreme Court this week. You got the opinions and the perspectives from a lawyer and a lady. So stay tuned in next week as we cover the recent ongoings at the U.S. Supreme Court. If you want to read more information about these cases, go ahead and click on our blog link below. We've got some more information there and stay tuned.